Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this series, we are going to start the fifth unit guys, in which we will be continuing the topics which we have started in the previous series, that is we will be continuing about transactions. Fine. So, concurrency control. So, what is this concurrency control? So, in the last lectures, we have gone through the problems which we are facing. Right? So, in parallel execution or in many situations, we faced a read-write conflicts and many conflicts, right? So, all those conflicts can be rectified using this Concurrency control. Concurrency is nothing but you will be controlling them. Fine. Okay. It is a process of managing simultaneous executions. Yeah, that's what I, I told. Parallel executions I told. Okay. Simultaneous execution of transactions in a shared database to ensure the serializability of a transaction. Fine. Okay. So there are totally three main reasons why we do this. So to ensure isolation. So isolation is nothing but I hope everyone remembers when we are when we studied the properties of transactions ACID. In that we studied about isolation. Isolation is nothing but hiding what we are doing, what the transaction is doing. So it is indirectly we can say that one transaction is not interfering with another. So this transaction is hidden, right? So any other transaction cannot interfere with it. So that's what I have just written here. To prevent a database consistency. Sorry, to preserve database consistency. So basically we, we may face some issues due to this parallel execution. We may face some inconsistent issues. So to rectify them or to preserve our consistency and to resolve the conflicts, read-write conflicts, write-write conflicts and many other conflicts. Fine? Okay. So, for concurrency control, there are many techniques, guys. Basically, there are two techniques. So, in this lecture, we'll be starting the first technique. In that, we'll be just going through the introduction. After that, we'll be going through different, different methods, guys. Okay? Okay. So, the first technique is nothing but using a lock-based protocol. So whenever you hear the word lock, you'll be understanding the main concept of it. So somewhere you'll be locking it, you'll be using it and you'll be unlocking it. So yes, this is the concept, but it is a bit different in this situation. Okay, so lock based protocol. A lock guarantees the execution of use of a particular item to a current transaction. So let us assume you are locking the variable A. So now you can use this A until you unlock it. Till that time, any another transaction cannot access this A. So that is nothing but this lock approach. So just like your home, you'll be locking your home, right? When you are going to vacation or any kind of place, when there is no one in your home, you'll be just locking it, right? So this is also the same way. Whichever lock you locked, with that lock only you should unlock. So let us assume you locked the variable A and you unlocked the variable B also. You cannot unlock A with the key of B. If you unlock B, only B will be allocated to another if anyone needs like that. It is separate completely. Okay. So these are used to, to acquire data item. We will be locking and to once the completion, we will be releasing the lock. So all data items must access in mutual exclusion manner. So you may ask me that what is this mutual exclusion word? So in operating system, we have already discussed about this mutual exclusion. So mutual exclusion is nothing but only one process will weigh will access a shared variable at a moment of time fine okay so i hope everyone got a small idea on this lock based so there are two different locks which we will be using in our further classes fine so those are nothing but shared lock and exclusive lock so shared lock will be represented as lock s exclusive lock lock x this is x s this is x fine in shared so shared means there will be some less operations, right? So that's the reason why we'll be having only read operation in shared. Whereas in exclusive, we'll be having both read and write. I hope everyone got a small idea on this. Okay, so let us take a small example, guys. So here we are having transaction 1 and transaction 2. So initially, I locked B. I read the B. I incremented or decremented B. I wrote the value of B. And I unlocked B. So here we are doing both read and write operations. Hence, this is an exclusive lock. Whereas lock SB, we are locking the same variable. Here we locked with exclusive lock. Here we are locking with shared lock. So shared lock will allow only read. We unlocked it. So this is nothing but a shared lock. So I hope everyone got a clear idea on this. Okay. So we are having two conversions of locks guys. So we can upgrade the lock. That is nothing but we can convert the shared lock to exclusive lock. Where here we are having only write, read operation. Here we can have read and write. Fine. Downgrading is also possible from exclusive lock to shared lock. Here we are having 
both operations so we'll be converting it to a single operation fine so i hope everyone got a small idea on this lock based approach so in the next tutorial we'll be going through the two phase locking mechanisms guys so this is the subtopic of this locking mechanism so in this in the next tutorial we'll be going through two phase locking that two will be and this two phase locking can be achieved in four ways or three ways four ways i think so let me check okay it's it, it's achieved in three ways so in the next tutorial we'll be going through the first phase that is nothing but two phase locking protocol or we can also call it as a basic 2pl thank you thanks for watching